It was one of the most brutal and vicious civil wars that much of the world has never heard of. Anyone who lived through Nigeria's Biafra war in the 1960s will forever be haunted by the atrocities, the memories of bodies in the streets, and the fear of not being able to survive another day. After the eastern part of Nigeria declared independence in 1967, the bloody battle that ensued left more than one million people dead from starvation, disease, or the endless explosions. The two and a half year war was literally hell on earth. As many of you who watch this show regularly know, I am Nigerian and I am from the part of the country where this war took place. Family members who lived through it tell me they never knew if they were going to eat, let alone what. It was common for people to feed off of grasshoppers, snakes, and termites. My mother's younger brother died during the Biafra War, and that was considered a very, very lucky outcome. If you only lost one family member, you thanked your lucky stars. So given all of that history and all of that pain, why are there now growing calls for a new secessionist movement in the exact same part of the country? We are joined live now by Amaka Anku, an expert on Nigeria and sub-Saharan Africa. She's also the head of Eurasia's Groups Africa Practice. Amaka, thank you so much for being with us. So you and I are both Nigerian. It's been over 50 years since this brutal civil war. Why is there this additional secessionist movement in the same part of this country bubbling up? Look, Zane, um, the, the, the fundamental problem here is that Nigerians don't trust Nigeria, right? Like you said, and there are, there are many reasons for that, right? All the years of military rule, Nigeria has underinvested in Nigerians and in, you know, basic services like health care, um, education, infrastructure. And, and there is then the broader issue of justice, right? Um, you... We saw the protests last year, police officers kill people and nothing ever happens to them. So, you know, all of this is taking place in that, with, against this history of the civil war that you just explained, where a lot of people in the southeast in particular feel like there's never been an official recognition of the suffering of the region, right? We don't have a, a day every year where the country remembers what happens and these lives that were lost that was disproportionately in in the mm -hmm. region right we don't even so, teach so, the history in the schools so let me let me ask you this because i think it's important for our audience to note that it's not just uh the eastern part of nigeria that wants to break away and have its own country you have the western part of the country the yoruba people that also want to have their own country Obviously, Boko Haram in the northeastern part of the country, they want to create an Islamic state. It sort of feels as though there are so many different groups in this great nation who have lost faith in this country. So um, just in terms of the president's strategy here, if there are people who feel marginalized, has the president made any effort to really show these various parts of Nigeria that he understands their concerns and that their voices are being heard? Not, I would say the government is not doing enough. And look, we, you know, people have lost faith in Nigeria in part because there's nobody in Nigeria articulating a vision, a positive vision for Nigeria's future, right? Nigeria has a crisis of ideas. Nigeria appears not to have any ambition. And look, that is often, in most countries, that's often something, a role that is played by government, a role that, you know, that to provide a, a holistic idea about what the country is about and where it's going to bring people together and drive buy-in. The government is not doing that. But I, I have to say, Zane, that that's also a role in most parts of the country that is also played by people outside the government. There's a role as well for thought leaders in the country, for private sector participants, to have a constructive vision of where Nigeria should be going, right, and push the government. And that's, you know, there's a symbiotic relationship that can happen here between people inside government and outside government mm -hmm. in articulating a positive vision for so Nigeria. I, I, wanna, I, Amaka, I just want to sort of get at how all of this ends, because obviously President Buhari is not going to wake up and say, OK, you get your own country, you get your own country, or you can have autonomy and you can't. He's not going to do that. So how does all of this end? You know, I don't think it ends until Nigeria starts to really and truly invest in Nigerians. 
until Nigeria, the Nigerian government, and it's, you know, whether it's Buhari or the person who comes after him, respects Nigerians enough to communicate consistently and clearly where, they go, where they, the, the, the country is going, what their vision is. Right? And then to start to invest in education, in healthcare, in infrastructure, and in all of the things that make a society function and make an economy competitive, right? Until that happens, you will continue to mm -hmm. see these kinds of calls for secession. And, and so, just in terms of what the secessionists want themselves, and obviously, yes, we know they want to break apart and form their own country, but is there anything else that they're willing to accept in the medium term? Or is it for IBOP and these other, these other groups, is it really secessionist or nothing? I do think that for the leaders of some of these secessionist movements, like Namdi Kanu, I do think it's secession or nothing. Um, you know, maybe the leaders of ODC in, 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 the, in the Southwest. I think that what their views are probably less relevant than the views of the minority, the populations that are sympathetic to those views. I think for most of those people, most of the people in the Southeast, some of whom are sympathetic to those views, I don't think it's a session or nothing. I do mm -hmm. think that a, a, a clear and consistent outreach, communication, and investment um, can help to change right. some of that, that, those views. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's such a shame because Nigeria is such a beautiful country. It has so much potential and just seeing all of these different areas wanting to separate, saying that they've had enough of being part of this great nation uh, is very, very sad indeed. Um, Amaka Anku, thank you so much for being with us. Oda in danger again. It's happening again. The same place. It happened the other time. How could it go over? Oda in danger, Oda in danger. Danger in Oda, they are coming. They are there, they are there. See there, see there. in danger. It's so good. Let me see the job. Let go ahead, let go ahead. Oh, that's so good, no, no, I don't want to go ahead. Give me money. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 